right, so tomorrow we have a summative, number nine, and it has uh, 2.4, which is our second try at that, 2.5a, which is our second try, but it has graphing, and you can use your calculator this time, 2.5b, which is new, and 2.6, which is new, okay? Um, 2.4a is this first thing on your pink sheet, and it starts out with list all the possible rational zeros. Anybody remember how this goes? Okay, but not yet. List all is the first question on the quiz. It's all the factors of what? Of the constant 52 over all the factors of the leading coefficient, which is 2. So what goes into 52? 1 in 52. Okay, what goes into 26? Okay, so therefore 13 goes in here four times. I think that's actually it, right? So there's our list, except what happens? They all can be over one or two. So if I put these all over one, I get one, two, four, 13, 26, and 52. But what if I put them over two? Two over two is one, right? Which is on our list. Four over two we have, 13 halves we don't have. 26 over two is 13 that we have, and 52 over two is 26 and we have. So positive or negative, those are the choices for rational zeros. Does that mean that's the only possible zeros? No, there could be radicals, right? They're not on that list. All right, now it says graph and divide, and as usual, I am not really prepared. Can't have a plot on just in case anybody else has one on. What did it start out with, guys? 2x to the fourth? Someone read the rest of it to me. Plus 2x to the third. Lovely. Do I have the signs all typed in right, guys? So if I do a zoom six, is this what anybody else is getting? Okay, which ones look like rational real zeros? Trace one, negative two. Okay, if I try to locate this one, that is somewhere between over here, we'll say, is that three and four maybe? Does this mean it's rational? No. No, because that is not an ending or repeating decimal. So there are some irrational zeros here. Irrational means like square roots, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so what did we figure out so far? one and negative two. So we do one into the, it doesn't matter what order, we could have started with the negative two. Into the original polynomial, two, two, negative 30, negative 26, and 52. Anybody confused yet? We good? That's the next zero. I shouldn't have put it down yet. Okay, bring... Um, I think on the quiz there's two real and two irrational, or two rational and two irrational, just like this. That's why it's on here. Okay, one times two is two, add is four, 
multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and it should come out zero. Is everybody good? Okay, then the next one we discovered was negative two, yes? But you can't go back to the original polynomial or it'll never get any smaller. You want it to keep getting smaller as you divide these out. So we're using successive division. Any luck? No? Okay. All right, so what does that mean? So far, we have zeros at 1 and negative 2. And we have factors of what? Yeah, what does this mean right here? Okay, this is a remainder. This is a constant x, x squared. So we have 2x squared minus 26. Is that, it says maybe irreducible factors or linear factors, but must be equivalent to original function. Is this an irreducible factor, meaning it doesn't reduce? What can we do to that? Take out a 2. So if we take out a 2, we have an x squared minus 13. Does that factor further? No. So the factored form, we can have a 2, an x squared minus 13. Does that get us back to what we started with, though? What else do we have to have? An x minus 1 and an x plus 2, because we said we had zeros at 1 and negative 2. Okay, now. All four exact zeros without decimals. How do I find the other two crazy ones? Can two equal zero? We already got one and negative two. How do we find these two? What do I write down? The square root of 13. So the four zeros, and you don't have to list them out this way. So if I went back to the graph and I typed trace square root of 13, that is a zero. And negative square root of 13 is a zero. Okay, but I should be able to see how you got that. Does everyone understand that you have to list the factors and all four exact zeros? Yes. Um, nope, that's fine. Absolutely. You don't have to list them separately. Anybody else have a question? Okay. The next section is 2.5a, and it says on your sheet, your pink sheet, that we're actually going to do problems off 17b and 15b. There's nothing on the pink sheet, okay? So 17b, number 8. If this were on the quiz, you would take your yellow sheet or actually it's going to be blue because I'm going to hand you one of these tomorrow. And you would start by doing what? Factors. So the top factors, x minus 3, x plus 1. Did I do that right? And the denominator factors how? I'm uh, eight. Oh, gotcha. I, am I wrong? Is this what it says on 17B number eight? Okay, it was cut off. I got you. That's my my bad. Sorry. Yes, I totally get what you're talking about. Though, what can we do on the bottom? Take out an X. All right. Now, before you cancel or do anything else, you have to state the domain restrictions. 
What can X not equal? This is number two. The domain is all real numbers except those that make the denominator equal to zero. X cannot equal three or if you set this denominator equal to zero, you get X equals zero or X equals three whatever order you want there, but those are the two things that cannot equal, and I will not make you write it in interval notation. Okay? The next thing says if there's a factor of both the numerator and denominator, there is a whole. Do we have such a thing? Okay? That whole exists at x equals whatever makes that zero, it says. x equals 3 is a whole. So we write that as three comma, then how do we find the other part of the whole? Plug what in? The three into the beautifully reduced, remember? We have to reduce that out of there. So then we get three plus one over three, which would be four thirds. So over here at three, where's four thirds? Just a little more than one, right? It's 1.3, one and a third. There is a hole. Make sure you graph the hole. Number four on the sheet says if you have a factor of the denominator that is not also a factor of the numerator, there is a vertical asymptote. So where did we have a vertical asymptote here? What made the denominator zero but not the top? Nope, we already did three. That was made both. Yeah, the only thing left down here is this. So x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote, which means are we going to have a y-intercept on this graph? No, it can't cross that because there's an, but we can get to that in a second. Um, the next step is number five. It says the zeros or x-intercept make the numerator only zero and write them as an ordered pair. So x-intercepts make the top zero. Where We'll make the top zero. Negative one will give you a zero. Why is three zero not an ordered pair? Because I made both top and bottom the whole. Okay, the next thing on here is y-intercept, but that's when you plug a zero in. If I plug a zero in here, 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 I get negative three over zero, right? Is that possible? It's undefined, so there is no y-intercept, just to clarify. All right, number seven says find the degree of the numerator and denominator. Now we're talking the original function here. What was the degree? Degree two over degree two. Is everybody awake here? Okay, so it is equal weight. And when it is equal weight, it says y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient, which was? 1 over 1, so we have y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. Is it possible that it crosses that? Yes, because it's a horizontal asymptote, okay? Um, we did have a 0. It was at negative 1. I forgot to graph that. All right, so now we go to our calculator. And we type, what was the numerator, guys? No, I'm doing the one we just did. x squared minus 3x minus, or minus 2x minus 3. Divided by the quantity x squared minus 3x. Is that right or not? Okay, so this is the one we're talking about. This I just left that in my calculator for later today. All right, so in a standard window, does that look okay for what we have going on? Do you remember my hint to see the hole? 
Sometimes Zoom Decimal will show us the whole. Yep, just barely. All right, if you wanted to trace just to find a couple nice ordered pairs, um, I don't think there's really going to be anything nice. You could try putting in a one. It's at one, two, just so you had some kind of a reference point. So it's close here as a whole, stays close. The thing you don't want to do is show it touching the x, uh, the vertical asymptotes if you can help it, and also don't show that it stops. Okay, it might look like it stops on your calculator screen. If I did a zoom six again, it kind of looked like it just stopped right down here and stopped here. Can't show it. It's got to be continuing on. Any questions? All right, for some more practice on 2.5, I'm going to go through just a few of these real fast. This is off 15B. What do we do to factor the top? Take out a 2. The bottom factors how? I don't think that's going to work, actually. To get a 5, don't we need a 4x plus 1 and an x plus 1 maybe? That would give us a 1 plus 4 would be 5 in the middle. Okay. So does it have a hole? No. What are the domain restrictions? x cannot equal? Yes, the things that make the denominator 0. So we'd get negative one fourth and negative one. Are either of those holes? If they're not holes, then they're what? And those are equations, x equals negative one fourth and x equals negative one. All right, let's do it in the order it says on our sheet. We'd be down to number five, the zeros. Make the top equal zero, what would we have? Is 2 a 0? Putting a 2 in this is not going to make a 0 come out. Putting a 3 in will make a 0. Y intercept, how do we find that? So in the original one, if this was 0, 0, 0, we'd have what? Equal weight. Top heavy, bottom heavy, bottom heavy makes it have a horizontal asymptote at, okay, that's right off the sheet. Any questions? All right, find the whole of this graph. Do you need me to practice this again? I can go real fast. I think it factors on the top. Plus 5 minus 5 plus 5 plus 2 in the denominator. So it has a whole where? Okay, which is x equals, if this is the common factor, the whole exists at negative 5. And then we plug it back in here. So we'd have negative 5 minus 5 would be negative 10 over negative 5 minus 2, which would be negative 7. So positive 10 sevenths or a little past 1. Any questions on how to find the whole? I know I went fast. Christian? Yes, this should have factored plus 2. Thank you. So this should have been plus 2. Yep, fix me. I am wrong. Okay. Um, this would be negative 3 then, right? So it would be positive 10 thirds. So this time it's much, it's at 3 and a third. Okay. 
Hopefully we would have caught that if we'd graphed it, but this one is not necessarily one you would have ever graphed. Where's the end behavior for this function? End behavior, guys, please don't get all confused. End behavior is just number seven. What is happening? Does it have a horizontal asymptote, oblique asymptote, other, what's happening? This phrase simply means, what's it doing on the far left and far right? Is it equal weight? So it's approaching what? Leading coefficient over leading coefficient, which is one. Does everyone understand when it says end behavior asymptote, all you're doing is looking at number seven. This one happens to be horizontal. All right, write the end behavior equation this function approaches. Again, we're on number seven, but this one is top heavy. And what does it say to do for top heavy? It says y equals quotient, ignoring remainder, yes? Is that what it says, or am I crazy? So, what are we going to do? Can we do synthetic division? Okay, don't tell Mr. Bruzzo. Okay, we have an 1x cubed, uh-oh, 0x squared, need a placeholder, negative 4x and an 8. Okay, bring down the 1. Multiply, add, multiply, add. Oh, I don't know. It, what is that? 192. We get to ignore it anyway. It's probably wrong. Okay. So what is our end behavior function? Did I make a mistake somewhere or is that right? Did someone else check? That's okay. All right, I'm going to get it wrong, though, or I'm not going to get a 5, and I'm going to cry. Why is this word bolded? What does this say you have to do? Y equals the quotient. Because this is what it approaches. This is a parabola, so this graph probably does something like this. So that the outsides of it would approach a parabola and you don't need to know that you just need to know that it has to be the equation for a parabola an equation means it needs an equal sign okay write a rational function with a hole at two where does that mean it's going to go or this is off worksheet 15 still i think isn't it no well, there's one like this on the quiz. I don't know if you have this or not, but how do you write a rational function with a hole at two? Plus two? Minus two top and bottom, right? A vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. Look on your sheet. Where does it say you get a vertical asymptote from? The denominator. Where does it say you get a hole from? It's got to be shared top and bottom, right? Okay, horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. How do you get a y equals 4? Perfect. It has to be equal weight to have a horizontal asymptote at anything other than y equals 0. And it's got to have a leading coefficient of 4. What could I do to make it equal weight? Okay, I could put an x. Um, I could just put some other funky factor, okay? I wouldn't square this because that does some funky stuff. It actually would mean there wasn't a hole, I think. So I'm not sure it's this hard on the quiz, okay? Any questions? Multiple right answers. All right, we are on to the pink sheet again. You have had two assignments that asked you to work with expressions. Is there an equal sign in either of these two problems? 
Are you going to answer me X equals something at the end? No. You are combining these into a single fraction. To be able to do that, you need a common denominator for the first one. You do not need a common denominator on the second one because it is multiplying and dividing. All right, what is the common denominator for the first one here? M plus 1 that it already has. And it's going to need an M plus 5. Multiplied onto it to get the common denominator. The second fraction is 2M over M plus 5. What's it going to need? And M plus 1 multiplied onto it. So now the common denominator has an M plus 1 and an M plus 5 in whatever order you want to put it down. Okay. What happens up top here, though? So I get 6M squared plus 30M minus 2m squared and be really careful this is minus 2m because that had a minus in the middle that we're just reading all right so the numerator becomes now we could take a 4m out of the top and that would be fine it's not going to divide out though it would be okay if you wanted to write that as 4m times m plus 7, just to check. But is anything going to fact divide out? Okay, so you could leave the top either this or this. All right, what's going on on the second question? Yes, you flip the second one, but you do what, guys? Factor everything. You can't cancel anything. If it has a plus or minus, you can only cancel the whole factor. What could I take out of the top of this one? A 9 and an x. That'll leave an x minus 5. The denominator, x minus 5 and x minus 8. How did I do? Plus 40 makes a minus 13. Okay. Then we have to flip this one over. So the 9x goes to the bottom. What can I do to the top? Which used to be the bottom, this one. Take out and a 5, right? If I take out a 5x squared, what's left? Okay. Now, anything on the top can cancel with anything on the bottom. X minus 5 divides out. 9X can divide out. If that 9X hadn't been over here, could you have still divided one of these X's out over here? Absolutely. But this whole 9X can divide out. So what's left? Yeah, you can distribute it back in or leave it. It's fine with me. You can just leave it factored. But remember, the goal was a single fraction, not a solution. It did not have an equal sign. Any questions on those? Where could I find more practice on those? Uh, I don't think so. 17A has solving equations like this, but not this. People puzzles, yes? And there was a blue worksheet from the last homework check called On Your Own. If you need more practice on that, or there's a remediation in the bucket. All right, solving equations is on the same section, but this one you are multiplying through by the least common denominator to find a solution. Okay, is this one on your sheet? Okay, the common denominator would be 3 times A, so I'm going to multiply here, and this big mess gets multiplied by a 3A. And this little fraction over here gets multiplied by a 3a. All right, what happens here? 
on the left side, A divides out, but I still have what? 3 times 4 is 12. In this big fraction, the 3A divides out, so I still have the numerator, A squared plus 4A minus 12, plus this A divides out back here, so I have 1 times 3 is 3. Now, because I have a squared, what do I want to do? Yeah, I want to get it equal to zero, right? So that I can solve it by factoring our quadratic formula if I had to. So I'm going to subtract a 12 over here. So I have an a squared plus 4 a's. Now I had a negative 12, another negative 12, and a plus 3. I should have combined these like terms first, probably, but all right. A plus 7, A minus 3, does that work? So A could be negative 7 or 3. Is that true? You could plug it in. It's going to be painful. But what are the domain restrictions? Before we started, A cannot equal 0. Is 3A cannot equal 0. If I divide, I get, right? 3 is a constant. Is there a reason I couldn't put a negative 3 in? No. You can divide by negative 3 or negative 9 or negative 3. It's not going to make anything 0. So as long as we didn't get 0, these should work. I could go back and prove it to you, but I don't want to waste time right now. All right, this is a hot mess. What's our, before we can find our common denominator, we need to what? Factor, I would not factor the top. I would just worry about the denominators. What can I take out here? A squared, A plus 5. This one has an A squared already. This has an A squared, A plus 5. So what is the common denominator that we're going to multiply through by? And A plus 5. It has to have everything. All right, so first we have a squared minus 8a plus 16 all over a squared a plus 5. Well, good for us. Everything goes away, yes? And we just have the numerator. Then we have a plus a minus 3 over a squared. What happens there? What divides away? Yeah, just the a squared. So what do we have to do with this mess now? We have to foil those together, guys. What happens? We get an a squared plus a 5a and a minus 3a and a minus 15. Luckily, it wasn't minus, so we didn't mess up with distributing a negative. It was just plus. We just had to foil those together. All right. On the right side, we had a 1 over a squared a plus 5. So when all that divides out, do we have a 0? We have equals what? 1. Okay. Can you combine some like terms over here? 2a squared, um, but there's negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3, minus 3 more is negative 6a. Did I do that right? Okay, and then we had 16 minus 15 would be 1, but it equals 1, so what happens? Okay. 
So we subtract a one off each side and get zero. How do we factor that? Take out a 2a, a minus 3. So if 2a equals 0, we get a could be what? <laughs> 2a equals 0, we divide by 2 and get a equals 0. The other one is a minus 3 equals 0, because either this equals 0 or this does. And that would make a positive 3. What's going on? Are both of these going to work? Why not? What were the domain restrictions back up here? A cannot be 0 or negative 5. So we have to throw this out. It is an extraneous solution. There's one on the quiz. Think that you have to throw out one of the solutions. A should be able to work at 3. So the solution to this should be 3. If we had more time, I'd check it. Any questions? More practice on this? 17A. Oh, that just extended the page off where I thought I was turning the page. All right, the last section of the quiz covers the inequalities. Okay, there's three or four questions. How would you go about graphing or finding the inequalities for this? Do you remember? If it's a single, if there's no denominator, okay, you just graph it and you find all the zeros and you say it's above or below the x-axis. So if I graph this, Actually, I don't even think I need to, but I could. If I take out an x, I'd have x squared minus 6x minus 7, which is going to factor x minus 7 and x plus 1. Can you guys graph it? Is it crossing? Um, let's see. It would cross at negative 1, 0, and positive 7. Is that what it looks like? Probably nothing like that because it probably goes really far down and up but is that the places that it's positive and negative and crossing okay so negative one to zero it's positive because it's above right zero to seven it's below so the graph is negative past seven further out here it's what positive and to the left of negative 1, this way it's negative. Okay, we go back to the original question, and they wanted to know where it is greater than or equal to. Okay, greater than or equal to means I can put square brackets where. What am I trying to include? Positive or negative pieces? the positive pieces okay so I want to know where it's positive so from here to here it was positive and from here to the right it's positive so how do I write that in interval notation negative 1 to 0 together with 4 to infinity after you've decided it's 7 it was 7 to infinity after you've decided, then write it down left to right, okay? Negative one, zero, seven, infinity. Questions on that? More practice is 15A. All right. There are one or two questions like that, but then there's ones with fractions. What are the directions for the fraction ones? When there's fractions or rational number, rational expressions, two things you have to do. Make it a single fraction
and it has to compare to zero. This one already compares to zero. And then the third thing is you find the critical values by setting top and bottom equal to zero. All right, so this one is compared to zero. We're good there, but we need to make it a single fraction. What will the common denominator be? So I have seven times five or 35. I am distributing what back here? A negative two, so I get negative two X minus six. And that's all over a 7 and an x plus 3. And I want to know where it's less than 0. So the top has a negative 2x plus 29. Guys, did I do that right? Okay, what are the places that this could equal 0, top or bottom? If I set the top equal to zero, I get negative 29 divided by negative two, which would be positive 29 over two or 14.5. If I set the bottom equal to zero, what do I get? Only negative three, yes? Okay, if I graph this thing, it's gonna have a vertical asymptote at negative three it's probably crossing the x-axis at 29 halves, which isn't going to be in your window unless you look out that far. I need to know where it's positive and where it's negative. Did anybody graph it yet? If I put in zero, I get a positive number. So then I'm thinking it's negative, positive, negative. So the question is, where was it less than zero? So I would have to say below negative three and above 29 halves. So the interval notation would say negative infinity to negative three together with 29 halves to infinity. Why do I never use a square bracket? It didn't have an or equal to. More practice on that stuff. Rewatch the second video on 2.6. All right, quiz tomorrow.